least squares, a very important topic, especially in engineering, and especially because of the geometric interpretation that we'll add next time. Right now, our discussion will be purely algebraic. It's funny how this class developed. We started with geometry, and then we got inspired by geometry and transitioned it into algebra, and by now we totally forgot about the geometry. And we'll do now least squares in pure algebraic terms without even thinking of the geometric intuition. But then we'll revisit the geometric intuition, and it'll be fantastic. <laughs> it's just we'll shed so much light and so much perspective on many things we do. Okay, so least squares. Here is the problem I'm solving. I think I should write down least squares. For us, least squares will be an attempt to solve this problem as accurately as we can. Once again, we're dealing with a problem where there are more rows than there are columns. One way to look at it, let's add some numbers. Suppose it's eight by three. So there are only three unknowns. Two ways to signal that we have a problem. Way number one is to say we have eight equations and three unknowns. How can we possibly satisfy eight equations when you only have three degrees of freedom? With three degrees of freedom, you'll be able to maybe satisfy the first three equations, or any three, just not all eight. So no way does the system have a solution. No way is it consistent, unless there is some incredible stroke of luck, which won't happen. One way. Another way is to say, look, this is a decomposition problem in R8, very rich linear space. But we only have three columns. We only have three columns to span an eight-dimensional space. Of course, it will fail to do that. It's five dimensions short. So what are the chances that our target vector is in the column space of, this, of these three columns? No chance. So from that perspective, too, there is no solution. So what are we going to do? Give up? Of course not. Here is what we'll agree on. Let's call this A, X, B, of course. Okay, this cannot be satisfied exactly, but maybe we will find the X so that the discrepancy is as small as possible. We'll call it, I think R is a common, R equals, I'll call it B minus AX. We want R to be as small as possible. So what this will end up being in just a moment is an exercise in matrix, multiple, matrix algebra. Some call it matrix gymnastics. I think I would say this is as complicated an example of matrix gymnastics that you should be able to handle. You'll see. Okay. So we want R to be as small as possible. Are you guys with me? So before we started embarked on studying the third pillar of linear algebra, we, had, we were completely unequipped to even approach this problem because our vectors did not have length. Our geometric vectors had length, but that's it. Our polynomials did not have length, and least squares over functions play a monumental role. And even our elements of Rn did not have length. And if you thought they did, that I did the best I could to, to stomp it out. Stump it out? Stomp it out. Stomp it out, yeah. Stomp it out. I forbade you from talking about lengths of vectors because you had to treat them on their own terms until we got to inner products. And now, with the help of an inner product, all of our vectors have length, as long as you introduce an appropriate inner product. So what would be an appropriate inner product here? Well, you can use any inner product. Maybe the problem that this came from would dictate what the best inner product will be. And depending on that inner product, the math that I'm about to show you will be just a little bit different. It would have a little extra ingredient. So I will use the standard inner product, much to my chagrin. But once again, we're not trying to, we're trying to illustrate a particular thing, so it's okay. You know, we'll go back to our general inner product soon enough. Maybe in the next lecture, probably in the next lecture. So yes, 
we will use the standard in a product. And with respect to the standard in a product, this is an element of Rn. Here's what makes our R8, Rn. Here's what makes the standard in a product nice. It is particularly easy to express in terms of, in the language of matrix algebra. Because the length of R squared is just R transpose R. Are you guys with me? What is the length of R? You dot it with itself. What does it mean to dot with itself in the standard in a product? The sum of squares of the entries. What's the matrix notation for it? R transpose R. So I think we just sorted it all out, right? So it would be wrong to say that the standard in a product is defined as R transpose R. No. It's just matrix expression for it. I think we learned today, because this exercise took all of you 15 minutes on average, right, that matrix notation is not always best. But it's good here, so we're going to use matrix notation. OK, R transpose R. So we have our starting point, and now we can roll. Let's plug in what R is. So you see FOIL coming on, right? FOIL will happen. But first, the transpose will happen. So we need to take this difference and transpose it. Of course, it's the difference. Let me call it sum. Sum. It will be the sum of the individual transposes. So it will be B transpose. OK, but this is the transpose of the product. AX transpose, which you're exactly right is the product of the individual transposes in the opposite order. And it just, I always marvel in mathematics how saying it really helps, but hearing it doesn't help at all. It only helps it when you say it yourself. When somebody says, oh, the product of the, the transpose of the product is easy. It's just the product of the individ individual transposes in the reverse order. That's not helpful. But when you look at a formula and you verbalize it yourself, for some reason, that's very helpful. So I always hesitate to say that mouthful, but that's what it is. B minus AX. OK, going on to the next line. Let me foil it in the order that I want. I'll take the last ones first. Now we see a combination we've seen before, A transpose A. I promised you that you would see this sort of combination all the time, and of course you do. You always have it when you dot things with each other that involve matrices. Okay, good. Minus x transpose a transpose b. 